Hi everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here and today we are going to paint a painting that you guys have been asking for for quite a while. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials as well as the music used in the video and let's get started. For today's painting we're going to use the following colors Mars Black, Titanium White, Primary Red which is really more on the pink side than the red side, and Prism Violet. Now the primary red and the violet, you can swap out for any colors you like. Just make sure that they work well together. And we're gonna use the following brushes. A one inch flat brush, about a half inch natural bristle brush. I also have a variety of angle brushes for my tree. I've got a 5 8 inch, a half inch, a 3 8 inch, and a quarter inch. So just a bunch of them. If you're more comfortable doing trees with round brushes, you can certainly do that too. If you're not comfortable drawing a circle by hand for the moon, then you'll need something to kind of act as a template. And so what I'm gonna do is use the lid from this Liquitex tub. It's about four and a half inches around. And I'm gonna use that to make my moon. And I'm painting today on a 12 by 16 inch stretched canvas. It is brand new, it hasn't been painted or gessoed or anything. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna paint this background with a mixture of the pink, purple, and white. And the technique I'm gonna use is very similar to the very first technique in my smoky background video. So I'm gonna take my one inch flat brush and wet it in my jar, wipe it off on the edge, and unlike my smoky background video where I only used black and white, I'm gonna use all three of these colors. So I'm gonna load up with white, and then I'm gonna grab a good sized chunk of purple on one corner, and a good sized chunk of red on the other corner. And now since I'm gonna paint over most of this, I don't have to worry about what it looks like. Don't, don't worry about blending it. Just get it on there. Every time you go back, pick up a slightly different combination of colors. That time I got more pink and only pink. I didn't get the purple. And this time maybe I'll just get purple. The more of the color you use and the less of the white you use, the brighter your background is gonna be. So if you don't want it to be quite so pastel, just make sure that you use quite a bit of the color and less of the white. And I think I do want it to be just a little more saturated in color, so I'm just gonna grab some of the purple on its own, some of the pink on its own. make sure I have nice bright colors. I really like to layer backgrounds. So like this and the Blue Valentine video where I layered the background. I think it gives a lot of dimension and depth to a painting. Whereas if you just paint right over the white canvas, the colors will seem a little more muted, the white may glow through, but when you put a color down and then paint over top of it, that first color gives just a little bit of dimension to the finished painting. So now I've got this covered. Notice I didn't worry about this. I'm just gonna paint all of this black, so I didn't worry about taking it all the way to the bottom. So I'm gonna let this dry thoroughly before we come back and do the black and white. All right, so now we're gonna do kind of the misty black and white scattering over top of this. So I have my one inch flat brush and it's cleaned off and just a little damp. And I wanna think about where I'm gonna put my moon. And I think I'm gonna have my moon kind of right about here. So I want to make sure that my moon isn't sitting in pure black, but I also don't want it in pure white because that would kind of obscure the moon a little bit. So just think about where you want it and make sure that you've got kind of a grayish color at least behind it. So I'm gonna start with white and I might grab just a hint of black, just like a tiny pinpoint of black. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is a very similar brush stroke to what you see here, except I am not going to aim to cover all of this. I'm really just kind of gonna scatter the color around and make sure that some of this pink and purple still pokes through. So I'm gonna start a little higher than um, the center of the canvas and just kind of like that. I'm not worrying about blending as usual and I'm definitely not worried about covering all of the background. I'm gonna get some more white, maybe just a little less than last time. And I'm gonna get a little bit more black than I did last time. And maybe I'm gonna blend that black in a bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing and work my way out a bit. This is very random. Just kind of scattered. So this technique actually came about because I was doing a paint party here and I was demonstrating this background, the purple and the pink. So somebody asked me a question and asked me to demonstrate something else and I had already painted over my canvas with this pink purple mixture and so I just grabbed some black and white so that they could see what I was doing and just layered it over top of the pink to demonstrate another brush stroke. And I looked at it the next day and I really liked it. So I decided to keep messing with it and that's where the, the painting is that you guys have seen on the wall here that you've asked me to teach you. So that's how this came about just from really just randomly painting over a canvas. So it's really interesting sometimes where inspiration can come from. So if you don't feel inspired or you don't know what to do, have no problem just grabbing a couple of random colors and just slashing over top of a canvas. Now I'm just gonna grab some black. I've still got some gray on here, just black. And I'm really gonna focus this down at the bottom and kind of toward the corners. Notice I'm not using a huge amount of black like I did with the white. Black is so strong, if I use too much, it will really start to take over everything. And I'm working quickly, not, it's not out of, you know, confidence or ability or anything. I'm working quickly so that I don't find myself spending too much time on an area and blending it out too much. If I work slowly right now, I may end up you know, putting too much attention into a spot and losing something. Now that I've got my black and gray pretty much done, I can look at it and decide if I want to add anything else. So I'm feeling like right here, it goes from this white to this gray too sharply. And I feel like I lost a little bit of my white. It's really centralized. I want my white to come out a little bit more. So I'm just gonna wipe that off on the edge of my plate. I'm okay with some of the black and gray still being there, but I'm gonna grab a bit of white and I'm just gonna kind of bring a bit of it out here. And I may end up washing off my brush a bit because I do have quite a bit of gray in there still. Let's just finish what I'm doing here and then I'm going to wash off my brush. Okay, clean, just white. And I'm trying really hard not to go over top of any of the pink and purple. I just want to add some of this white out here. So notice these are pretty small brush strokes and each one goes a different direction than the last. And I 
just grabbed a tiny bit of black just to make sure that I've got a nice transition there. And I'm working in even smaller brush strokes now. Just almost little dashes. No more than three quarters to an inch. And some more, and just make sure my corners are nice and dark. For the ground, I'm going to load up with black on both sides of my brush, and I'm going to grab just a little snap of white, because if I do just plain black, it's just going to be flat, but we've got a moon in here that would be casting some light, so that little bit of white on there is going to add some slight shadow and highlight into the ground, so that it's not just a flat black silhouette. So I'm going to draw my ground with the edge of my brush like this. I'm not pushing the corner into the canvas. I'm using this brush like this. So along the edge, I'm gonna draw a line like that, okay? I'm not going like that, mashing it. It's just flat and I'm using the top edge to draw the line. Okay, so I'm gonna put that like here and just kind of give it a little bit of an organic shape as I go. little higher on this side. And now that I've drawn my horizon, I can fill it in with my brush flat this way. Make sure your brush stroke goes the same direction as the top of your hill so that it doesn't, if you, if you start filling it in this way, you're gonna tell, you're gonna be able to tell and it's gonna look flat, it's gonna look like a wall. So make sure that it always follows basically the shape of the horizon. So see right here where I had very, very dark and right here where I have the light coming across it, even though this doesn't match the shape of that hill, it's still going this direction, which tells your eye that it's the ground. But now that I have this lighter area cutting across this dark, it almost looks like there's two different hills and one rolling in front of the other. So don't be afraid to play with the amount of light and dark that you put in there. Okay, so now we're gonna do our moon and I'm gonna put it right about here. I'm gonna use the lid from this paint jar and kind of plop it about, about like that. Now, if you watched my Windy Moonrise video, you've seen me paint a moon before. If you haven't seen that video before, you can click the white information icon right up here and you can watch it now. We're doing a moon, but I'm not gonna do it the exact same way as in that video because you've already seen that and I don't like to do things the same way twice. So we're gonna do this one similar, but different. First of all, this one's gonna be bigger than that one and the way we do the highlights and the low lights and the shadows is gonna be totally different. Okay, so I've got my one inch flat brush and I'm gonna mix up kind of a medium to light gray. Just about like that. And then I'm gonna take the edge of my lid and just run it along there. all the way around and then be really careful when you put it down so that you don't um, drag it and get a streak just put it straight down oh, my easel is escaping and then pull it straight off and I'm just gonna load up with white and there's probably gonna be a little gray in there too and that's okay and I'm gonna fill it in. Now when I'm going around the edge, I'm gonna do just like I did on the hill. I'm gonna use the tip of the brush. Don't crush the corner, almost like, almost like a clock. So if your brush is clock hands, it would be pivoted right there and it would move around the edge like that. It wouldn't go like this. You're gonna lose control of the shape of your brush. 
So you wanna go like that and then just drag it around that edge. And then just kind of fill this in. You don't have to worry about brush directionality here. I'm just gonna make sure that this paint is kind of thick, a little on the thick side. I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and just kind of make some shadow areas. Just kind of slush some there, I want a shadow there, probably a little one up here, and some about there. And I don't really care what that looks like. I'm just getting the darkness on there. Now we're gonna take the natural bristle hairbrush and it's dry. And you wanna keep a paper towel on hand. I'm gonna decide where I want kind of craters to be and I'm gonna start in the middle of it. So this is gonna be a crater. So I'm kind of gonna push the tip of the brush in like that. And then work out in like a circle. There's no wiping going on here. I'm just dabbing at it. When I feel like my brush has too much paint on it or if it's depositing too much color rather than just messing up the color, then I'm just gonna scrub it off on my paper towel. Right here at the edge, just get in close and just touch right to the edge. Be really careful with it. You don't wanna go outside of it but you wanna take that texture all the way there. And each time I dab at it, it overlaps the previous dab, so I don't end up with polka dots. So I'm going to break up this entire texture. There won't be any smooth brush lines. So I'm finished with that crater. I'm gonna move on to this one. And again, I'm gonna start in the center of it and work my way out in a spiral. Really careful to get in here, right at the edge. If you happen to go outside of it a little bit, you can just wipe it away super quick with the tip of your finger. If your background is still wet, then you can probably even just blend it in. Right here where that white is that wasn't in any of the craters, I'm just gonna dab over it to make sure that it has the same type of texture. So just have a little bit of patience. It might take you a few minutes to get through this, but if you laid that paint down nice and thick, then it, you shouldn't have a problem with it drying while you do this. Once you're done, if you look at it and you decide you want a little bit more light or dark somewhere, just scrub your brush off on the paper towel. It's still dry, I haven't wet it. And you can grab just a teeny tiny bit of whatever color and blot it in here and there. I want a little bit of pure white up in this area. really putting pressure on my brush here. It's just barely touching the canvas. And if you want to darken a spot, just do the same thing with a little bit of black. And get a few darker spots going on. 
Again, I'm just barely, barely touching. Try not to make polka dots. If you're gonna darken something up, don't do it in a perfect circle. Kind of, you know, branch something off a little bit here and there. I'm gonna break this up just a little bit. I feel like it's just got a little bit of a hard line here. start on our tree. So I have my 5 8 inch angle brush and I'm going to load up with some black. Now when you're drawing a tree it's always best to make sure that your paint is a little on the wetter side especially if you're I mean if you're using craft paint which is it tends to be kind of thin you probably don't want to wet it down so much because then it's going to be too transparent but if you're using a higher quality paint and it's thick make sure that you keep it just a little waterier because it'll spread more smoothly. So I'm going to remember the angle. The point of the angle brush points downward and I'm going to start from the bottom and I'm going to draw just a main part of the tree up. Don't be afraid to let it cross in front of your moon. Oh, my paint was a little wet there. And so now that I've got the trunk where I want it, now I can work on widening it. So I'm going to just put a little more pressure on my brush. So let me show you the difference in pressure here. So when I'm doing this line, I'm dragging the brush about like that. See there's almost no pressure and the whole length of the brush is not touching. It's just mostly the tip of the brush. When I'm fattening out the trunk, it is the whole length of the brush and I'm pushing harder. See how that line is flatter? So if you're having a hard time and your, your line is too fat, you're just pushing too hard. So just go ahead and fatten that out however you want. It can be nice and smooth or it can be jagged. I always tell people there are a trillion type of trees in the world and they all look different. So nobody can tell you that your tree doesn't look like a tree. Even if it doesn't look like a tree that actually exists in the world, it's your tree. You make it however you want. My paint was a little bit too wet there so some of it's kind of see-through if that happens to you don't worry about trying to fill it in it's too wet just let it dry and come back to it okay now I'm gonna branch off just a couple of different ones now when we make branches off of trees if you want them to look really smooth then what you don't want to do is come out like that at an angle. I mean certainly you can paint a tree like that. There are trees that definitely look like that. But if you want a really smooth looking branch then you want to start lower. So if I want my branch to come out right there I'm going to start down here. And as I come up then I'm going to swoop out right there. And that's going to give me just a little bit of a smoother, softer shape. going to add a couple more main branches and then we'll move on to some smaller ones. I'm going to move down to my 3 8 inch angle brush and I'm going to start by just shaping the, the tips of these longer branches. I'm just using like the last couple hairs on the brush there to get that super fine line. Pushing a little harder as I go. I think my moon is 
is still wet, so I gotta be careful where I put my hand. Some smaller branches I'm just gonna do it the same way I don't want this tree to be too terribly filled out because I want the moon to really be the main focus but I'm gonna give these branches some interesting shapes I think just start by blocking in where you want them to be you can come back and fill them all out later Notice how I'm starting down here and swooping up and out, not just coming right off of the edge of it. If a branch gets away from you, just a damp brush and you can wipe it away. So if you get a branch that's too fat, just immediately clean it up with a damp brush and you're good. that branches are a really good place for you to start if you're having issues with brush control if you feel like like you have a hard time getting smooth lines that do what you want them to do or getting thin lines then just practice painting trees I think that they have so much variation in them and like I said before they can be whatever you want them to be so you can really get creative and practice all kinds of brush strokes and at the same time be creating something if you have something happen like this you see where I've got it's almost like broken off and I don't want to make this branch much wider so if you get something like that you can either clean it up like I showed you over here or you can just turn it into another branch and I think that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna start down in here again and just bring it right up off of that little piece that got away from me at the bottom of the tree I'm gonna get some more black and Maybe just a tiny hint of white. And I'm going to follow the same direction as the ground and just kind of blend it across. So I'm going to start right there at the bottom and just swoop across it. use whatever brush you're comfortable with. I'm just using the angle brush that I use to do the little branches. Even though my ground is dry, I'm not having a hard time covering it because it's just the black and the white. Okay, I'm going to move up to my larger brush though so I can just cover a bigger area. is we're gonna practice something so I know I've mentioned to you guys before about starting with light pressure and ending with heavy pressure or vice versa so I'm gonna show you up close exactly what that looks like so with light pressure it's gonna start with just a couple hairs on the brush see that just a couple right on the tip of the brush and ending with heavy pressure is gonna look like this so as I go I'm slowly adding See how, as I go, more of the brush is touching and that line gets wider. 
until there where I've put full pressure on the brush. And so you can see where it went from little to fat. Now let's try it the other way. So going from heavy pressure to light pressure, I'm gonna start by pressing my brush flat and dragging, and as I drag, my hand is slowly moving away from the canvas, slowly bringing the brush up until I end with a tiny line. So that is definitely gonna take some practice. So take a canvas, maybe an old painting that you didn't like the way it turned out, paint it white, get some paint, black, whatever, and just practice these little lines until you're super comfortable with them. Just keep doing it. Over and over and over. You don't have to paint anything in particular, just practice. When you feel pretty comfortable with that, then you can start moving them in different directions. So maybe starting down here fat and kind of changing the shape as you get narrower. So do this and then I wanna see it. Feel free to post your messy fat skinny skinny to fat line canvas to me. And there you have your mystical moon painting. I hope that you guys had a great time painting this with me. I know that you've been asking for this painting for a while, so I'm glad that we could finally get to it. Take this technique and get super creative with it. You don't have to be limited to the pink and purple in the background. You could do blues or greens or red, um, anything. You could even do just solid black and then the white over it. That might be really interesting. Be really creative and just have fun with it. As always, feel free to share your paintings on my Facebook page. I am working on trying to make a vlog series where I share your paintings with you. So if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing, um, just a quick once a week video series where I talk about your paintings, answer any questions you have, and so forth. So let me know in the comments below or on my Facebook page if you would be interested in that. If you like this video and you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure that you do so. I put out a video every week, and if you subscribe, then you can make sure to always know when I've got a new one coming. Also make sure to follow me on Facebook. Every once in a while I give you guys insights as to what's coming, ask your opinions, let you choose what's coming next. So make sure you're there and you can also see all of the awesome paintings that other viewers have posted to me. So thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next week.